Hello and welcome to Meditate with Abhi. If you're new to this channel, my name is Abhi Dugal and I help you create the life by design. I want to start this video by asking you a simple question. Do you know what happens to you after you fall asleep? Is there a specific pattern your body and mind follows as you go to sleep? So before we get into today's video, I want to let you know that we are celebrating two things today. One is my birthday on the 24th November, and the second is your gift, the gift of 20,000 subscribers, which just happens to be today. So I wanna really express my gratitude for continuing to support this channel so it continues to grow and reach more people. Well, without any further ado, let's get into today's topic, sleep cycle. And if you stick around until the end of the video, we'll give you a trick, a secret, on how to align your sleep cycles and what time would be the best for you to sleep. Everything in this universe is cyclical in nature which means it follows a certain pattern and then these patterns repeat themselves. Just like the day comes after night and the night comes after day, it's a cycle. The earth revolving around the sun is a cycle. The moon revolving around the earth is a cycle. The earth rotating uh, around its own axis is also a cycle. Your body is also synced with nature, with earth, and the cycle is called circadian cycle, circadian rhythms. So your sleep is also not an exception. It also follows a cycle. So today in this video, we're going to talk about these cycles of sleep. So if you look at this picture, this is one sleep cycle. And one sleep cycle takes 90 minutes to complete approximately. And these one slip, this one sleep cycle can be divided into four different stages. N1, N2, N3, REM state, and then it repeats. And there is four to five cycles, total cycles just like this, you can complete during your seven to eight hours of sleep. So let's talk about these different stages our body and mind goes through as we transition from wakefulness to sleep. When we transition from wakefulness to sleep, what happens is there is a change in brain waves, which means the number of thoughts go down. And as the number of thoughts go down, it's a prerequisite for you to be able to sleep. So in waking life, your brainwave state is called beta brainwave state when you're having too many thoughts going on. You have to bring the thoughts down from beta into alpha, into theta before you can transition successfully into a good night's sleep. So let's go through these cycles one by one. So as you transition into sleep from wakefulness, you go from alpha state of brainwave, which is very relaxed brainwaves, to the brain starts producing theta waves. That's when you're just beginning to go to sleep. That's called N1. It's obviously as you're going to sleep, you're, uh, it's the lightest sleep. So anybody can come and do any noise and you'll wake up from this sleep. So that's why it's called the lightest sleep. So what's going on in N1? Well, first, the core body temperature decreases. Second, your pineal gland starts releasing melatonin. And that's the circadian rhythms we had talked about in a different video. Well, and the sense of control is shifting from your conscious mind to your unconscious mind. And that's why it's very important to feel safe so you can hand over the control to your subconscious mind. So because of this transition, one might feel little jerks or contractions. And these movements are sometimes accompanied by a sense of falling or tripping. And these are considered normal in N1 sleep. So sometimes we have a problem transitioning into N1 sleep. And that's one type of insomnia. Because we have a busy mind with our lifestyle, we sometimes bring our office home and we're still thinking about all the things which happened during the day. 
So it's really hard for the mind to let go of the control. And that's why we designed this sleep music on this channel, which slowly helps you transition or gives you a safe space for you to just unwind. So as we go from N1 and to N2, the second stage of your sleep, your sleep becomes a little deeper, but it's still considered as light sleep. The major difference between your N1 and N2 is that you have something called sleep spindles and K-complexes in your sleep. What are these sleep spindles and K-complexes? Well, they are also activities of the brain. So as you transition from N1 into N2 sleep, the brain starts producing more of theta waves. But this transition is not smooth. Sometimes the uh, brain waves go up and then it gradually goes down and those are called sleep spindles. So what are these sleep spindles scientifically? Well, scientists are now telling us that as you go through the experiences of your day, you are creating short-term memory the things you have done just recently. Those memories need to be archived into the long-term memory so your brain can function properly and it can free up the memory in your conscious mind. So that's what exactly is happening during these sleep spindles. Second thing happens is called K-complexes and they are very good for your cognitive function. K-complexes, what they're doing is they're keeping you sleep while you're going through the external stimuli. So let me give you an example of the K-complexes. Let's say you're sleeping with your partner and your partner is taking a turn from one side to another and they end up uh, brushing their skin with your skin or they end up uh, hitting you with their elbows or you kick you with their legs. So these things happen all the time. So there's a part of brain which is creating these K-complexes. What it's doing is it's taking these external stimuli and they're categorized into non-dangerous or non-threatening circumstances. So it doesn't disturb your body and mind from reaching into the next cycle. So there's some other things going on in the body while you are in N2 stage. The body temperature continues to go down a little bit. Your body and muscles start to relax. There's rapid eye movement which is not there in this uh, sleep because it's called a non-REM -E state which means the eyes in N2 come to almost halt they just stop going like this so there's not much activity going on from N2 especially in N3 which is the deepest state we can go to and now we enter the third stage of your sleep called N3, which is the most important and really what this channel is dedicated to. If you enter the N3 sleep four times in a night, that's considered a good sleep. Typically, when you have been sleeping for 40 minutes to an hour, you can enter, you may enter N3 state. What happens in N3 state? Well, when you transition from N2 to N3, the brain waves fall down even further. The brain starts producing slow delta waves now. There is not much activity going on in the brain, and you can tell that from your non-rapid eye moments, which means your eyes are not moving. That's why this is the last stage for non-rapid eye movement. And of course, there is no uh, dreams going on in this stage. This is a very restorative and healing stage for the body because there's a lot of things going on. Your lymph system is working to flush out all the toxins. Your immune system is getting stronger. Your body is regenerating. So there's a lot of systems going on automatically during this stage because they have this available energy because your brain is not working. Now during N3 stage, there could be some issues with certain people. They could be caused from genetic all the way to stress. There could be any different uh, reasons for that. But the issues could be sleepwalking or eating during sleep or some kids wet their bed while they're sleeping. Because you're so deep in sleep, you have no awareness of the outside world. 
so that's why you can this can cause issues like this and this is of course an exception and usually children have more sleepwalking issues than adults by the time you're a um, teenager these issues the body resolve by itself after this state we go into the REM state REM that's the only state which rapid eye movement what happens during this state well your brain starts producing it basically lights up it starts producing beta waves which is pretty much the same wavelength as compared to your waking state so that's why it's called a paradoxical sleep because uh, if you just look at the brain and not the person on EEG you'll think the person is still awake but you're actually sleeping and dreaming so dreams are very important because you're resolving all the unresolved emotions in your body. So let's say you're fasting in your waking life. And as you go to sleep, you're hungry. And in realm state, you'll dream about eating all the delicious food from everywhere. And that's gonna resolve that emotion of hung hunger. And similarly, anything which you starve you will dream that out and that's why it's so important and restorative for your mind to be able to feel good whole the next morning and of course it depends on when in which stage sleep stage do you dream so now the scientists are telling us that REM state is not the only state where you dream you do have dreams in other states too but it's less common when you go to REM state first time in your first sleep cycle let's say you go to sleep around 10 o'clock then you'll enter the REM state around 11 30 that's when you'll start dreaming but as you go further progress into the night let's say three o'clock four o'clock the REM state starts increasing more and more and in total you'll dream around 20 to 25 percent of your sleep um, duration and in your dream state, there's a part of brain called pons, which basically uh, signals the neurons in your spine to disengage. When that happens, you get into sleep paralysis, which is very important because you don't want to be acting all your dreams. Let's say you are dreaming about having a fight with someone. And then as you start acting out your dream in your bed, you might end up hurting yourself or your uh, partner so that's why sleep paralysis is desirable in your sleep so these are the stages of your sleep and one thing I want to point out here is uh, the stages don't necessarily go from N1 to N2 to N3 to REM and then to N N1 usually scientists are studying now more and more but usually the scientists have found out that we go from N1 to N2 to N3 and back to N2 and then into REM. One thing I want to make sure that I mention is that you can go through these sleep cycles more smooth if you're breathing from your nose. If you're breathing from your mouth, it causes a lot of other issues which can disrupt your sleep cycles. Well, to summarize this, how do you make sure that you're sleeping good and that your sleep cycles are perfect? and that you're transitioning from one sleep cycle to another without problems. Well, one trick I used for myself is to get a small tape before you go to sleep. Just get a piece of tape and tape it on the side of your mouth. Even if you have to breathe, you can still override this tape. It's basically a reminder for you to be able to breathe in and out from your nose. So this technique helped me a lot to make sure that I breathe in and out during my sleep through my nose. So I would love to hear from you guys in the comment section if uh, try this out and let me know. And second important thing I wanna talk about which we mentioned earlier is when do you sleep? What's the best time for you to sleep? Well, here's a trick. You wanna complete at least four to five sleep cycles during your night. If you don't have much time, if you're pressed with time, make sure you complete at least four cycles and not four and a half. So it's very essential to have a sleep cycle complete. That's why it's so important to wake up without the alarm and your circadian rhythms should be able to wake you up. But let's say you wanna sleep 
uh, for six hours. Let's say you wake up at 6 a.m. That's gonna complete you four cycles. So you wanna make sure you go to bed just before 12 o'clock. And if you wanna have a more restorative sleep, you wanna at least do five cycles. And in that case, you wanna go to bed by 10.30. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of insight into your own sleep cycles and how you can leverage this knowledge in your sleep. I would love to know if this helped you. If this video created a little value in your life, make sure you smash the like button and hit the subscribe button. And make sure you uh, share this video with a loved one. Until next time, my name is Abhi Dugal and I help you create life by design. Namaste, peace, signing off.